On December 3rd, 2019, Senator Kamala Harris suspended her presidential campaign. So, to you, my supporters, my dear supporters, it is with deep regret, but also with deep gratitude, that I am suspending our campaign today. But I want to be clear with you, I am still very much in this fight. <laughs> no, you aren't. So, how did we get here? Well, let's do a post-mortem of the presidential campaign of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, who found success as the District Attorney of San Francisco and the Attorney General of California, was elected to the Senate in 2016 and was considered a rising star in the Democratic Party. In 2018, Harris's profile rose when questioning Judge Brett Kavanaugh during his Supreme Court confirmation hearings. Can you think of any laws that give government the power to make decisions about uh, the male body? Uh, I'm happy to answer a uh, more specific question. But male versus female. There are um, medical procedures. I'll repeat the question. Can you think of any laws that give the government the power to make decisions about the male body? I'm not, a, I'm not a thinking of any right now, Senator. <laughs> you see what she did there? Well, the media sure did. Harris's grilling of Kavanaugh made her a star in the Democratic Party, and they raved about her tough questioning. And of course, political pundits knew that this was basically her audition for entry into the 2020 presidential race. And that's exactly what happened. On Martin Luther King Day, she made her announcement on Good Morning America. I am running for president of the United States. Yeah. Well, and, <laughs> and I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about it. I am very excited about it. If you win, yes. you're going to be commander in chief. Yes. What qualifies you to be commander in chief? Well, first of all, let me just say I love my country. I love my country. That's not a qualification. Why are you the best capable, the strongest Democrat to defeat Donald Trump? Well, Andrea, let's start with this. I love my country. I love my country. But 17 or more other Democrats say that they love their country. Why are you better than they? I think the voters will decide, ultimately. Spoiler alert, they decide on someone else. I'm running for president because I love my country. I love my country. Yeah, you've said that already. I, I love, love my, my country. country. I, I love my country. country. Kamala Harris reminds me of that one character in Goodfellas. And Jimmy two times, who got that nickname because he said everything twice, like... I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. It's real. It's real. And I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about it. We love our country. We love our country. To our collective peril. To our collective peril. Because we're not going back. We're not going back. Harris is never going to be president. Never going to be president. So within 24 hours after Senator Harris officially entered the race, her presidential campaign raised $1.5 million, which is no small feat. Harris started out strong. Of the declared candidates, Harris consistently polled in second place behind Senator Bernie Sanders and ahead of Beto O'Rourke, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Cory Booker, and Senator Amy Klobuchar. April, however, was a different story as South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Vice President Joe Biden entered the race. Immediately, Biden and Mayor Pete rose above Harris in the polls, and eventually she was even passed by Senator Warren. While Harris's polling average didn't rise, it didn't fall either. In other words, Harris needed a boost. And the first Democratic presidential debate was her ticket out of the doldrums. Watch how she deftly used this totally unscripted and off-the-cuff one-liner. Please, we will let you all speak. Senator Harris. You can't so afford to wait for the evolution issue. on these issues. Okay. Hey guys, you know what? America does not want to witness a food fight. They want to know how we're going to put food on their table. Yes. Nope, totally not scripted beforehand. Then she hijacked the debate using her woman of color privilege. I do not believe that the average American is a racist, but the average American is woefully undereducated about the history of race in the United States. I, I Ms. Williamson, like thank, thank you very much. Vice President, President Biden, Biden, I'm gonna, we're going to get to you. Hang on, we're going to get to stage, I would well, like to speak I, I, on the issue of race. Also on the stage was Andrew Yang, 
a person of color who certainly endured through issues of race, but who cares about that because, you know, Asian privilege. And I'm gonna now direct this at Vice President Biden. Um, I do not believe you are a racist. But... But I also believe, and it's personal, and it, I was actually very, it was hurtful, to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. Harris is referring to how Biden spoke of his experience as a senator in the 1970s and worked with Democratic segregationist senators to get legislation passed. His point was that to get things done in Congress, you sometimes need to work with your ideological rivals. But in the 21st century, <laughs> that's a big no-no. It was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. Senator Harris is referring to the policy of assigning children to a school outside of their own neighborhood on the basis of their race in order to bring about racial desegregation. You know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. So to clarify, evil racists worked to oppose school busing, busing that Kamala Harris was able to participate in. Got it. Do you agree today, do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then. No, Do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the, the second class to integrate Berkeley, the, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step no. in. And with that, the media praised her debate performance and declared Senator Harris the clear winner. And within 24 hours of the debate, her campaign raised $2 million. Not only that, but the debate gave Harris the bump that she needed in the polls, nearly doubling her numbers from a 7% polling average to a 15.2% average. It also hurt Biden's polling, who saw a drop from 32% to 26% in the same period. But once the smoke cleared, Harris's attack started to fall apart people started questioning the timing of this tweet, which was published within minutes of her That Little Girl Was Me line during the debate. And the fact that her campaign immediately started selling this That Little Girl Was Me t-shirts. This made her breakout moment seem less genuine and personal, <laughs> not that it ever was, and it got worse for Harris when the media started questioning her argument. You're being accused of delivering a low blow last night. What do you say to that? You know, Gail, it was about just speaking truth. Mm -hmm. And um, as I've said many times, I have a great deal of respect for Joe Biden. The point that I was making is, had those senators, those segregationists, had their way, I would not be a member of the United States Senate today. I would certainly not be a, 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 a top contender to be president of the United States. But that point has nothing to do with Joe Biden. Also, if Biden was remotely racist, then why would Barack Obama pick him to be his vice president? And when she was pressed about the busing issue, even Harris seemed confused. So let me just be really clear. Busing is a tool among many that should be considered. So I think of busing as being in the toolbox of what is available and what can be used. So during the second Democratic debate, Harris was asked to clarify her stance on busing. Vice President Biden says that your current position on busing, you're opposed to federally mandated busing, that that position is the same as his position. Is he right? That is simply false. And let's be very clear about this. When Vice President Biden was in the United States Senate working with segregationists to oppose busing, which was the vehicle by which we would integrate America's public schools, busing is a tool among many that should be considered. And considering that school busing hasn't been a thing for decades means that this whole argument by Harris is a distraction from things that voters actually care about, like Oh, I don't know. We have got to have far more bold action mm -hmm. on criminal justice reform, like having you, true Senator. marijuana justice. So the question was, could Harris recover from the misstep 
of her empty BS busing argument. Not if Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard had anything to do with it. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I did, in, I did inhale. inhale. <laughs> <laughs> man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people. You actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Senator Harris. <laughs> this was the most talked about moment of the debate. Congresswoman Gabbard destroyed Harris, who under fire could not properly defend her record or directly respond to any of the specific examples that Gabbard threw at her. And the icing on the cake was this exchange between Harris and CNN's Anderson Cooper. Did you expect that uh, from Tulsi Gabbard? Uh, had, had you had interaction about that in the past? And how do you think it went? Well, I mean, listen, I th this is gonna sound immodest, but I'm obviously a top tier candidate. And so I did expect that I would be on the stage and take hits tonight because there are a lot of people that are trying to make the stage for the next debate. Right. Yeah, it's do, the, for a lot of them, it's do or die. Well, yeah, and especially when people are at zero or 1% or whatever she might be at. I can only take what she says in her opinion so seriously. Harris had a chance to respond to Gabbard's accusations and instead wrote her off as unimportant and insignificant. And that was a huge mistake. And the fact that Harris refused to address her record when given the chance was pretty much the beginning of the end. Now, while Congresswoman Gabbard's attack was certainly a key moment, it was just one of many factors that contributed to the demise of Senator Harris's presidential run. Let's speak truth. Climate change is real. Climate change is presenting an existential threat. Climate change, it's real. Well, first of all, I don't even call it climate change. It's a climate crisis. It represents an existential threat to us as a species. One minute later. Climate change represents an existential threat. So much for sticking to your convictions. Then Harris had been a co-sponsor of Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All Act in 2017. And in a CNN town hall in January 2019, Harris said the following. We need to have Medicare for All. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, to reiterate, you support uh, the Medicare for All bill, I think initially co-sponsored co by Senator Bernie Sanders, you're also a co-sponsor yes. on it. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Let's eliminate all of that. Let's move on. Then in July, she was pressed by CNN's Kyung Law about the plan's details. Because 150 million Americans are covered by private insurance. What happens to those 150 million Americans under President Harris? Well, it's the same as the millions of Americans every day that transition into Medicare as seniors. It's seamless, without any difference to their coverage in terms of access to, to, to health care. But by the September debate, she was disavowing Sanders' plan and talking about giving Americans a choice. Senator Harris, you started out co-sponsoring Senator Sanders' bill. You now say you're uncomfortable with it. Why? I support Medicare for all. I always have, but I wanted to make the plan better, which I did. Oh, she made it better, guys. Which is about offering people choice, not taking that from them. People have the choice of a private plan or a public plan because that's what people want. Oh, I see. She was ideologically against private insurance until she realized that she wasn't. Then she claimed that she would take executive action to implement gun control laws. Congress has had years to act and failed because they do not have the courage. When I'm elected, I'll give them 100 days to pull their act together, put a bill on my desk for signature, and if they don't, I will take executive action and put in place a comprehensive background check requirement and ban the importation of assault weapons into our country because it is time to act. However, this is blatant 
patently unconstitutional as it would infringe on American Second Amendment rights. Harris also has the same answer for DACA. I will immediately, by executive action, reinstate DACA status and DACA protection to those young people. And then she would use the same method to make pharmaceutical companies lower their drug prices. Congress doesn't do it, then force it through with executive action. Your policy that you released today, the drug mm -hmm. policy, mm -hmm. uh, what I found quite intriguing about it is mm -hmm. that in proposal after proposal from your gun policy to your drug policy, you've said that you will lean on executive action if Congress fails to act. Mm -hmm. You're a sitting member of Congress. Mm -hmm. What does this say about your belief in the authority of Congress? But Congress has the authority. The question is, is there the will? The question is, is there the courage? And when Joe Biden pointed out that executive actions aren't viable in most cases, he was shot down by Harris. Some things you can, many things you can't. <laughs> Let's let the senator answer. Oh, well, I mean, I would just say, hey, Joe, instead of saying no, we can't, let's say yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Harris, whose polling average was at 15.2% in July, was as low as 4.4% in October. So what does Kamala attribute to her downfall? <laughs> I'm sure you can guess. Is America ready for a woman and a woman of color to be president of the United States? America was ready for a black man to be president of the United States. And this conversation happened for him. It's not that America isn't ready for a black woman to be president, it's just that they will never be ready to have this black woman as president. But when all else fails, blame the Democratic base for being racist. Hell, you might as well just call them deplorables. Then in late October, it was reported that Harris's campaign closed three out of four offices in New Hampshire and laid off more than a dozen field organizers. Then there were these three articles about the campaign that talked about dysfunction, a lack of direction, and a power struggle between campaign manager Juan Rodriguez and campaign chair Maya Harris, Kamala's sister. The New York Times also reported that extensive polling led her to believe that there was great value in the word truth. So she titled her 2019 memoir, The Truths We Hold, and made a similar phrase the centerpiece of her early stump speech. And that phrase was, let's speak truth. And boy, did she use it. Let's speak some truths. Let's speak more truths. Let's talk truth. Speaking truth. Speaking truth. We have to speak truth about this. Truth. 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 The truth. Truths. Truths. We have to speak truth. We have to speak truth. The truth. There's so many truths. We have to speak truth that automation is real. Wait, no one said automation wasn't real. Anyway, the Times said that she dropped the saying out of a belief that voters wanted something less gauzy. But I think that she dropped it just because she was sick of saying truth over and over again. And the week after former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg entered the race, Harris was knocked out of the top five. Bloomberg either tied with Harris or was ahead of her in polling. Then Harris canceled a big money fundraiser in New York due to a personal matter and later that day sent a message to her supporters. So here's the deal, guys. Um, my campaign for president simply does not have the financial resources to continue and the financial resources we need to continue. There's that Kamala two times thing again. I'm not a billionaire. I can't fund my own campaign. And as the campaign has gone on, it has become harder and harder to raise the money we need to compete. However, Harris had more cash on hand at the end of September than Biden, Klobuchar, Yang, Gabbard, Bennett, Williamson, and Castro and yet they all figured out how to stay in the race. Here's a good question. Where did all that money go? So it's not because she changed her policy positions, couldn't defend her record, properly manage her campaign, or even show modesty. I'm obviously a top tier candidate. It's none of those things. It's because she's a woman of color who isn't a billionaire. But don't worry, Democrats, she's still in the fight. Although I am no longer running for president, I will do everything in my power to defeat Donald Trump. No, Just like no, 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 no. You're done. Kamala. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and follow me on Twitter. Also, check out these videos that you may have missed. As always, thanks again for stopping by, and I hope to see you next time.